from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of a special announcement brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome to this special announcement for Nutanix about some new product releases in the public cloud. To help us kick this off for the Asia Pacific and Japan region, happy to welcome to the program, Jordan Rises, who's the Vice President of Marketing for APJ in Nutanix. Jordan, help us introduce it. Thanks, Stu. So today we're really pleased to announce Nutanix clusters availability in Asia Pacific and Japan at the same time as the rest of the world. And we think this technology is really important to our geographically dispersed uh, customers all across the region in terms of helping them on ramp to the cloud. So we're really excited about this launch today and Stu uh, can't wait to see the rest of the program. And make sure you stay tuned at the end for our interview with our CTO, Justin Hurst, who's going to be answering a bunch of questions that are really specific to the APJ region. All right, thank you so much, Jordan, for helping us kick this off. We're now going to cut over to my interview with Monica and Tarkin with the news. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and I want to welcome you to this special event that we are doing with Nutanix. Of course, in 2020, many things have changed, um, and that has changed some of the priorities for many companies out there. Acceleration of cloud adoption absolutely have been there. I've talked to many companies that were dipping their toe, were thinking about uh, where they were going with the cloud, and of course have rapidly moved to accelerate to be able to leverage work from home, uh, remote contact centers, and the like. Uh, so we have to think about how we can accelerate what's happening and make sure that our workforce and our customers are all taken care of. So at the one of the front seats of this is, is of course uh, companies uh, working uh, to, to help modernize uh, customers out there, and Nutanix uh, is part of that discussion. So I want to welcome to join us for this special discussion of cloud and Nutanix. have two of our CUBE alumni. First of all, we have Monica Kumar. She's the Senior Vice President of Product with Nutanix, and Tarkin Maynard, uh, who's a relative newcomer, second time on theCUBE in his new role, many time guest. Uh, previously, Tarkin is the Chief commercial officer uh, with Nutanix. Monica and Tarkin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. So happy to be back on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. All right, so Tarkin, as I was teeing up, we know that you know IT staffs in general, CIO specifically, and companies overall are under a lot of pressure in general, but in 2020, there, there are new pressures on them. So, you know, why don't you explain to us the, the special cloud announcement Tell us what's Nutanix launching and uh, why it's so important today. So Stu, first of all, thank you. Uh, glad to be here with Monica. Uh, um, and basically, uh, um, uh, you and I uh, you know, spent some time with a few customers in the uh, uh, past few weeks and months. Um, I'll tell you, um, the things in our industry are changing at a, at, a, at a pace that we've never seen before, especially with this pandemic backdrop as we're going through and, and obviously all the economic uh, challenges that creates beyond the uh, obviously health challenges and across the world, all the pain it creates, but also creates some opportunities uh, for our customers and partners to deliver solutions uh, uh, to our uh, enterprise customers and, and commercial customers and uh, uh, you know, public sector customers um, in multiple industries from healthcare, obviously very importantly, to manufacturing, to supply chains, and to all the other industries, including financial services and public sector, as, as, again. So in that context, uh, and, and, and Monica knows as well as she's our leader in our uh, strategy, uh, we're putting lots of effort in this new uh, multi-class strategy as a company. As you know, uh, as too well, Nutanix wrote the book in digital infrastructures with its own hybrid, you know, uh, 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 converged infrastructure story. Now we're taking that next level via our data center solutions, via our DevOps solutions and, and user computer solutions now to a multi-cloud fashion, working with uh, uh, partners like um, AWS. So uh, uh, in this launch, we have our new um, hybrid cloud infrastructure, Nutanix Clusters product now available on AWS. We are super excited. Uh, we have more than 20 tech firms and customers and partners at C-level executive level supporting this big launch. Timing is hugely important because of this pandemic backdrop. And the goal is obviously to help our customers save money, focus what they're important, what's important for them, 
uh, save money for them and making sure they streamline their IT operations. So it's a huge launch for us and we're super excited about it. Yeah, and the well, one thing I would add to, you know, what Tarkan said too is, look, we talk to a lot of customers and obviously cloud is the constant in terms of enabling innovation. But I think more with COVID, what's on top of mind is also how do we use cloud for innovation, but really be intelligent about cost optimization. So with this new announcement, what we're excited about is we are bringing, you know, making really a hybrid cloud a reality across public and private cloud, but also making sure customers get the cost efficiency they need when they're deploying the solution. So we are super excited to bring, you know, a true hybrid cl cloud offering with AWS to the market today. Well, I, I can tell you Nutanix cluster is absolutely one of the exciting technologies I've enjoyed watching and getting ready for. And of, of course, uh, a partnership with the largest public cloud uh, player out there, AWS, is really important. When I think about Nutanix for, from the earliest days, uh, the word that we always used for, for the HI space and Nutanix specifically was simplicity. <laughs> Anybody in the tech space know that true simplicity is really hard to do. When I think about cloud, when I think about multi-cloud, simplicity is not the first thing that I think of. <laughs> so Tarkin, help us connect, you know, how is Nutanix you know, going to extend the simplicity that it's done uh, for so long now in the data center into places like AWS with, with this solution? So, uh, Stu, you're right on, uh, spot on. Um, um, you look, we, uh, Monica and I spend a lot of time uh, uh, with our customers. One thing about uh, Nutanix executive team, we're very customer driven. And I'm not just saying this uh, to make a point. Uh, we really spend tons of time with them because our solutions are basically so critical for them to run their businesses. So just recently, I was with an, a senior executive, C-level executive with an airline, Right before that, Monica and I spent actually with one of the largest banks in the world, in France, in Paris, right before the pandemic, we were actually traveling, talking to uh, not only the CIO, the chief operating officer on one of these huge banks. And the biggest issue was how these companies are trying to uh, basically adjust their plans, business plans. I'm not talking about tech plans, IT plans, the business plans around this backdrop with the economic stress and obviously now pandemic is in, in, in a big way. Uh, one of the CIOs told me, it was an airline uh, executive, um, a, look, Tarkan, in the next 12 months, my business might be half of what it is today. And I need to do more with less um, in so many different ways while, while, I'm, you know, while I'm cutting costs. So it's, it's a tough time. So in that context, is to, um, you're absolutely right. Multi-cloud is an, a, a difficult proposition, but it's critical for these companies to manage uh, there are cost structures across multiple operating models. Cloud to us is not a destination. It's a means to an end. It is, it is an operating model. At the end of the day, the differentiation is still the software, the unique software that we provide from digital infrastructures to, to deliver end-to-end -end discrete data center solutions, DevOps solutions for developers, as well as for end-user computing individuals to make you sure to take advantage of these VDI, desktop as a service type of capabilities. So in that context, what we're providing now to these CIOs who are going through this difficult time is a platform in which they can move their workloads from cloud to cloud based on their need, with freedom of choice. Look, one of these big banks that Monica and I visited in France, huge global bank, you know, they have uh, workloads on AWS, they have workloads on Azure, they have workloads on Google, they have workloads on French Telecom, the local XP, they have workloads in, in Germany, they have workloads uh, on cloud service providers in Asia, uh, in Taiwan and uh, other locations. On top of that, they're also using Nutanix on-prem as well as Nutanix Cloud, our own cloud services for DR. And for them, this is not just a destination, this is an operating model. So the biggest request from them is, look, can you guys make this cost effective? Can we use all these operating models and move our data and applications from cloud to cloud in simple terms? Can we get some kind of a flexibility with, with commits as well as with the credits they paid for so far? And those are the things we're working on. And I'm sure Monica is going to get a little bit more into detail as we talk through this. We are super excited to start this journey with AWS with this launch, but we're not going to stop there. Our goal is, is you know, we, we just kind of discussed with Monica earlier, 
provide freedom of choice across multiple clouds, both on-prem and off-prem, uh, for our customers to cut costs and to focus on what's important for them. Yeah, and I would just add, you know, to sum it up, we are really simplifying the multi-cloud complexity for our customers. And I can go into more details, but that's really the gist of it, is what Nutanix is doing with this announcement and, and more coming up in the future. Well, Monica, when I think about customers and how do they decide you know, what stays in their data center, what goes in the public cloud, it's really their application portfolio. I need to mm -hmm. look at my workloads, I need to look at my skill set. So when I look at the cluster solution, what, what are some of the key use cases? What workloads are, are going to be the first ones uh, that, that you expect or you're having customers uh, use, use with it today? Sure, and you know, as we talk to customers too, there's clearly few key use cases that they've been trying to you know, build a hybrid strategy around. The first few ones are bursting into cloud, right? If, in case of you know, demand, uh, sudden demand, how do I burst and scale my, let's say a VDI environment or database environment into the cloud? So that's clearly one that many of our customers want to be able to do simply and without having to incur this extreme complexity of managing these environments. Number two, it's about DR. And we saw with COVID, right? Business continuity became a big deal for many organizations. They weren't prepared for it. So the ability to actually spin up your applications and data in the cloud seamlessly in case of a disaster, that's another big use case. The third one, which many customers talk about is, can I lift and shift my applications as is into the cloud without having to rewrite a single line of code or without having to rewrite all of it, right? That's another one. And last but not least, the one that we are also hearing a lot about is, how do I extend my current applications by using cloud native services that's available on public cloud? So those are four, there's many more, of course, but in terms of workloads, I mentioned two examples, right? VDI, which is virtual desktop infrastructure, you know, end-user computing, and also databases. More and more of our customers don't want to invest in, again, having on-premises data center assets sitting there idly and, you know, wait for when the capacity surges, the demand for capacity surges, they want to be able to do that in the cloud. So I'd say those are the few you know, use cases and workloads. One thing I want to go back to what Tarkin was talking about, really there are three key reasons why the current hybrid cloud solutions haven't really panned out for customers. Number one, it's having a unified management environment across public and private cloud. There's a few solutions out there, but none of them have proved to be simple enough to actually put into real execution. You know, with Nutanix, the one thing you can do is, is literally build a hybrid cloud within under an hour. Under an hour, you can spin up Nutanix clusters, which you have on premises, the same exact cluster in Amazon, under one hour. There you go. And you have the same exact management you know, plane that we offer on prem that now can manage your AWS Nutanix clusters. It's that easy, right? And then you can easily move your data and applications across if you choose to. You want to move and burst into cloud? Public cloud, do it. You want to keep some stuff on-prem, do it. If you want to develop in the cloud, do it. Want to keep production on-prem, do it. Single management plane, seamless mobility. And the third point is about cost. Simplicity of managing your costs, making sure you know how you're going to incur costs. How about if you can hibernate your AWS cluster when you're not using it? We, allow the, we have the capability now in our software to do that. How about knowing where to place which workload? which workload goes into public cloud, which stays on premises. We have an amazing tool called Beam that gives the customers that ability to assess which is the right cloud for the right workload. So I can go on and on about this, you know, we've talked to so many customers, but this is in a nutshell, you know, the use cases and workloads that we are delivering to customers right out the gate. Well, Monica, I'd love to hear a little bit about the customers that have had early access to this. What customer stories can you share? Understand, of course, you're probably going to need to anonymize, but I'd like to understand how they've been leveraging clusters, the value that they're getting from it. Absolutely, we've been working with a number of customers and I'll give you a few examples. Uh, there's a customer in Australia, I'll start with that. And they basically run a, a big you know, event that happens every five years for them and that they have to scale something to 24 million uh, you know, people. Now imagine if they have to keep capacity on site, you know, anticipating the needs for five years in a row. Well, they can't do that. And that big event is going to happen next year for them. So they're getting ready with now clusters to really expand their VDI environments into the cloud in a big way with AWS. 
So from Nutanix on-prem to AWS and, and expand VDI and burst into the cloud. So that's one example. That's, you know, obviously when you have an event-driven capacity bursting into the, into the cloud. Another customer who is in the insurance business, for them, DR is of course very important. I mean, DR is important for every industry and every business, but for them, they realize that they need to be able to, you know, transparently run their applications in the case of a disaster on the cloud. So they've been using now Nutanix clusters with AWS to do that. Another customer is looking at lifting and shifting some of their database applications into uh, AWS with Nutanix, for example. And then we have yet another customer who's looking at retiring their, some a part of the data center you know, estate and moving that completely to AWS with Nutanix as the backbone, Nutanix clusters as a backbone. I mean, and we have tons of examples of customers who during COVID, for example, were able to burst capacity and spin up remote, you know, hundreds and thousands of remote employees using clusters into AWS cloud, using Citrix also, by the way, um, as the desktop provider. So again, I can go on, we have tons of customers. There's obviously a big demand for this solution because now it's so easy to use. We have customers really surprised going, wait, I now have built a whole hybrid cloud within an hour and I was able to scale from you know, six nodes to 16 nodes just like that on AWS cloud from on-prem six nodes to 16 in AWS cloud. You know, our customers are really, really pleasantly surprised with the ease of use and how quickly they can scale using clusters in AWS. Yeah, Tarkin, I, I have to imagine that th this is a real change for the conversations you have with customers. I mean, Nutanix has been partnering with AWS for a number of years. I remember the first time that I saw Nutanix at, at the reInvent show, but cloud is definitely front and center uh, in a lot of your customers' conversations. So uh, with your partners, with your customers, uh, has to be a, just a, a whole different uh, aspect to the conversations that you can have. Absolutely, Stu. As you heard from Monica too, as I mentioned earlier, this is not a, just a destination for the customers, right? I know you're using these buzzwords. <clears throat> At the end of the day, this is an operating model. It's an operating model they want to take advantage of to cut costs and do more with less. So in that context, as you heard, uh, you know, in this, even in this conversation, there's a big pain point in this. Like, uh, a, again, being able to move the workloads from location to location, cost optimize those things, provide these streamlined operations. Again, as Monica suggested, making the apps and the data relating to those apps mobile and obviously provide built-in you know, networking capabilities, all those capabilities making it easier for them to cut costs. So look, we're hearing constantly from the enterprises, uh, small and large, private sector and public sector, nothing different. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, they have options. They want to have the freedom of choice. Some of these workloads are going to run you know, on-prem, some of them off-prem, and off-prem is going to have tons of uh, different variations. So in that context, as I mentioned earlier, we have our own cloud as well. You know, we provide 20 plus SKUs to 17,000 customers around the world. This is a $2 billion software business run rate, as you know. And, and a lot of those customers, on-prem customers now also come into our own cloud services. With Colo partners, we have our own cloud services with our own billing, payments, logistics, and service capabilities. With a credit card, you can actually, you can do DR, disaster recovery as a service to Nutanix itself. But some of these customers also want to go be able to go to AWS or Azure or to a local service provider. Sometimes as US companies, we think US only, but think about this, this is a global phenomenon. I have customers in India, we have customers in Australia, as you know, Monica talked about, in China, in Japan, in Germany. And some of these enterprise customers, public sector customers, they want a DR, disaster recovery, as a service to a local service provider within the country. Because of the new data governance laws and security concerns, they don't want the data and apps to go out of, outside of the boundaries of the you know, uh, country. In some cases, in the same canton, if you're in Switzerland, not even forget about the country, the same city. So we want to make sure we give capabilities to our customers, use the cloud as an operating model the way they want. And as part of this, just so you know, Stu, we're not alone on this. We cannot do this alone. We have tremendous level of partner support, as you're going to see in the announcements from HPE as one of our key partners, Lenovo, AMD, Intel, Fujitsu, Citrix for end user computing, we're partnering with Palo Alto Networks for security, a, a, a slew of partners. As you know, we support you know, a VMware with ESXi. We have a, a partners like Red Hat, who's doing tons of work on the Linux front. We partner with IBM, we partner with 
Dell. So the ecosystem makes it so much easier for our customers, especially with this pandemic backdrop. And I think what you're going to see from Nutanix, more partners, more customer proof points to help the customers at the end of the day to cut costs in this difficult backdrop, especially for the next 24 months. I think what you're going to see is tremendous, so to speak, adoption of this multi-cloud approach that we're focusing on right now. Yeah, let me add, uh, I know our partner list is long. So Tarkan, also we have the global SIs, of course. You know, the Wipros and HCL and TCS and Capgemini and Zensar, you, you name it all, we are working with all of them to bring clusters-based solutions to market. And, you know, for the entire Nutanix stack, also partners like Equinix and Yota. So the, it's a long list of partnerships. You know, one thing I did want to bring up, Stu, which um, I forgot to mention earlier and Tarkan reminded me, is our superior architecture. So why is it that Nutanix can deliver this now to customers, right? I mean, our customers have been trying to build hybrid cloud, you know, for a little while now and work across multiple clouds. And, we you know, it's been complex. The reason why we are able to deliver this in the way we are is because of our architecture. The way we've architected clusters with AWS is it's built in native network integration. And what that means is if your customer and end user who's a practitioner, you can literally see the Nutanix VMs in the same space as Amazon VMs. So for, for a customer, it's in the exact same space. So it's really easy to then use other AWS services and we bypass any complex and latency issues with networking because we are exactly part of AWS VPC for the customer. And also the customers can use, by the way, the Amazon credits uh, with, with the way we've architected this. Uh, we, we allow for, for bringing your own license. By the way, that's the other true part about simplicity is same license that our customers use on premises today for Nutanix can be brought exactly the same way to AWS if they choose to. Now, of course, we do also offer other licensing models that are cloud only, but I want to point out that BYOL is, is something that we are very proud of. We are truly enabling bring your own license to AWS cloud in this case. Well, it's interesting, Monica. Of course, one of the things everybody's watched of Nutanix over the last few years is that move from an appliance primarily to, to a software model. And as an industry as a whole, it, it, it's much more moving to uh, the, the, the cloud model for pricing. And it sounds like uh, that, that's the, the primary model with some flexibility and options that you have uh, when you're talking about the cluster solution here. Is that correct? Yes, we also, we also offer the pay as you go model, of course, on cloud that's popular. So customers can decide they just want to pay for the amount they use, that's fine. Or they can bring the existing on-prem license you know, to AWS. Or we also have a commit model where they commit for a certain capacity for the year and they go with that. So we have two or three different kinds of models. Again, going with the freedom of choice for our customers, we offer them different models they can choose from. But to me, the, the best part is the bring, bring your own license model. You know, that's again a true hybrid pricing model here. They can choose to use Nutanix where they want to. Yeah, well, yeah. and Monica, I'm glad you brought up some of the architectural pieces here because you talked about all the partners that you have out there. If I'm sitting in the partner world, I've been heard nothing over the last few years, but I've been inundated by all of the hybrid solutions. So every public cloud provider, including AWS now, is talking about hybrid solutions. Uh, you've got virtualization players, infrastructure players, all talking out there. So it, it, architecture, you, uh, you, you talked a bit about. Anything else, key differentiators that you want people to understand as what sets Nutanix apart from the crowd when it comes to hybrid cloud? Well, like I said, it's because of our architecture, you can build a hybrid cloud in under an hour. I mean, you know, prove to me if you can do with other providers. And again, I, I don't mean that, you know, being having that ego, but really, I mean, honestly, for our customers, it's all about how can we speed up our customers' experience to cloud. So building a cloud under an hour, being able to truly manage it with a single plane, being able to move apps and data with one click in many cases, and last but not least, the license portability, all of that together, you know, the, I think the way Dheeraj, our CEO, sums it, and Tarkan and I have talked about this is, we may not have been the first to market, but we believe we are the best to market in this space today. That's what I would say. Now, Tarkin, I, I'd love to hear a little bit of the vision. So as it was Monica kind of alluded to, anybody that you know, kind of digs underneath the covers is it's bare metal offerings from the cloud providers that are enabling this technology. Uh, there was a certain partnership that AWS had uh, that enabled this, and now you're taking advantage of it. Um, what do you, when you look at clusters going forward, give us a little bit, what should we be looking for when it comes to AWS and maybe even beyond? 
Thank you, Stu. Like the actually a uh, spot on question. Um, you know, most companies in the space, uh, they follow these buzzwords, right? Ah, we're multi-cloud. And when you kill the onion, you find out, okay, you support, you know, two cloud services and you're actually on uh, some kind of a marketplace and you're one of the, you know, uh, 19,000 services. We don't see this as a multi-cloud. Our view is complete freedom of choice. So our vision it, it includes uh, on top of our, you know, private cloud, government cloud success with our customers, with our enterprise commercial and public sector customers, also deliver to them choice with Nutanix's own cloud, as I mentioned earlier, with our own billing payment logistics capabilities, starting with DR as a service, disaster recovery as a service, but take that to next level, the database as a service, with BDI, desktop as a service, and other services that we deliver. But on top of that also, as Monica talked about earlier, partnerships we have with service providers uh, like Yoda in India, uh, work going on with SoftBank in Japan, work going on with OVH in, in France, and multiple countries that we're building this XSP service provider telco relationships, give those international customers choice within their own local region, in their own country, in some cases, even in their city where they are, making sure the network latency is not an issue, security, data governance is not an issue. And obviously the third leg of this uh, multi-leg stool is hyperscalers themselves like AWS. AWS has been a phenomenal partner working with Doug Hume, Matt Garman, the executive team under Andy Jassy and Jeff Bezos. They've been super partners. Obviously that bare metal service capability is huge differentiator. And with the typical AWS simplicity, and obviously with the Nutanix simplicity coming together, but given choice to our customers, as we move forward, obviously our customers have a multi-class strategy. So um, I'm reading an amazing book called Silk Road. Uh, it's an amazing book. I strongly suggest you all read it. It's all talking about partnerships uh, throughout the history. The you know those em empires, those uh, uh, countries who've been successful, partnered well connect the dots well. So that's what we're trying to learn from our own history, connecting the dots with the customers and partners as we talked about earlier, working with companies like with Vipro. Uh, and we already delivered an end user computer service called that's about a service virtual desk, database as a service, uh, um, you know, digital data services with them. We have a few other new services starting with HCL and others. So all these things come together as a complete end-to-end -end strategy with our partners. So we want to make sure as we move forward in upcoming weeks and months, you're going to see these announcements coming up uh, uh, one partner at a time. And obviously we're going to measure success one customer at a time as we move forward with the strategy. All right, so Monica, you mentioned that if you're an existing Nutanix customer, you can spin up in the, in the public cloud in under an hour. I guess the final question I have for you is, number one, if I'm not yet a Nutanix customer, is this something I could start in the public cloud and leverage some capabilities? And whether I'm an existing customer or a prospect, how do I get started with Nutanix clusters? Absolutely. Uh, we are all about making it easy for our customers to get started. So in fact, I know seeing is believing. So if you go to Nutanix.com today, you'll see we have a link there for something called a test drive. So we are giving our prospects and customers the ability to go try this out, either just take a tour or even do a 30 day free trial today. So they can try it out, they can just get spun up in the cloud completely and then connect to on-premises if they choose to, or just if they choose to stay in public cloud only with Nutanix, that's absolutely the customer choice. And I would say this is really only the beginning for us as Tarkan was saying. You know, our future, I mean, I'm just really super excited about our future and how we're going to enable customers to use cloud for innovation going forward in a really simple manner that's cost efficient for our customers. All right, well, Monica and Tarkin, thank you so much for sharing the updates. Congratulations to the team on bringing this solution out. And as you said, just the beginning. So we look forward to talking to you, your partners and your customers going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Monica. Hi, and welcome back. We've just heard Nutanix's announcement about Nutanix clusters on AWS from Monica and Tarkin. And to help understand some of the specific implications to the Asia Pacific and Japan region, happy to welcome Justin Hurst, who is the CTO for APJ with Nutanix. Justin, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Stu. Thanks for having me. 
Absolutely. So, you know, we know, Justin, of course, 2020 has had a lot of changes uh, for everyone globally. Uh, mm. Heard some exciting news from your team and wondering if you can bring us inside you know, the APJ region and, you know, what will the impact specifically be for, for your customers in, in your region? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a great question. And, you know, it has been uh, a tremendously unusual year, of course, for everyone. We're all trying to figure out how we can adapt and how we can take this opportunity to not only uh, respond to the situation, but actually build our businesses in a way that we can be more agile going forward. So we're very excited about this announcement and the new capabilities it's going to bring to our customers in the region. Yeah, you know, Justin, one of the things we, we talk about is right now there's actually been an acceleration of how customers are looking to on-ramp to the cloud. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the solution, what's the operational impact of, of Nutanix clusters uh, and that, that acceleration to the cloud? Well, sure, and I think that is really what we're trying to accomplish here with this new technology mm -hmm. is to take away a lot of the pain in onboarding to the public cloud. Uh, for many customers I talk to, the cloud is aspirational at this point. They may be experimenting, they may have a few applications they've spun up in the cloud or using a SaaS service, but really getting those core applications into the public cloud has been something they've struggled with. And so by harmonizing the, the control plane and the data plane between on-premises and the public cloud, we just completely remove that barrier and allow that mobility that's been something people have really been looking forward to. All right, well, Justin, of course, the, you know, the announcement being with AWS is the global leader in public cloud, but we've, we've seen that the cluster solution uh, when it's been discussed in earlier days, uh, isn't necessarily only uh, for AWS. So what, what can you tell us about your customer's adoption with AWS and maybe what we should look at down the road uh, for clusters uh, with other solutions? Yeah, for sure. Now, of course, AWS is the global market leader, which is why we're, we're so happy to have this launch event today of clusters on AWS. But with many of our customers, depending on their region or their regulatory requirements, they may want to work as well with other providers. And so when we built the Nutanix cluster solution, we were careful not to lock in to any specific provider, which gives us options going forward to meet our customer demands wherever they might be. All right, well, when we look at cloud, of course, the financial implications are one of the things we need to think about. Uh, we've seen a number of hybrid solutions out there that haven't necessarily uh, been the most economical. So what mm -hmm. are the financial considerations uh, when we look at this solution? Yeah, definitely. I think when we, we look at using the public cloud, it's important not to bring along the same operational mindset as traditional on-premises infrastructure. And that's the power of the cloud, is the elasticity and the ability to burst workloads, to grow and to shrink as needed. And so to, to really help contain those costs, we've built in this amazing ability to hibernate workloads so that customers can run them when they need them, whether it's a seasonal business, whether it's something in education where students are coming and going for different terms. We've, we've built this functionality that allows you to take traditional applications that would normally run on premises 24 seven and give them that elasticity of the public cloud, really combining the best of both worlds. And then building tooling and automation around that. So it's not just guesswork. We can actually tell you when to spin up a workload or where to place a workload to get the best financial impact. All right, Justin, final question for you is, you know, this, this has been the works, uh, Nutanix working on the cluster solution for, uh, for, for a bit now. Uh, what's exciting you uh, that you're going to be able to bring this to your customers? Yeah, there's a lot of new capabilities that get unlocked by this, this new technology. I think about a customer I was talking to recently that's expanding their business geographically. And what they didn't want to do was invest capital in building up a new data center in a new region. Because here in APJ, the region is geographically vast and connectivity can vary tremendously. And so for this company to be able to spin up a new data center effectively in any AWS region around the world really enables them to bring the data and the applications to 
where they're expanding their business without that capital outlay. And so that's just one capability that we're really excited about and we think will have a big impact in how people do business and in keeping those applications and data close to where they're doing that business. All right, well, Justin, thank you so much for giving us a look inside the APJ region and congratulations to you and the team on the new Tannic Clusters announcement. Thanks so much for having me, Stu. All right, and thank you for watching. I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you for watching theCUBE.